Good morning. I mean, sorry. Good afternoon, grade 11s. I will come to our business study, uh, business studies class. Today, we're still looking at marketing activities and concepts uh, uh, on production policy. For those who are just joining us, welcome to our 19th lesson. My name is Hector S. Ngos. So basically, boys and girls, we looked at different policies as from last week. We looked at your product policy. Um, we also, we also looked at your, uh, what you call your distribution policy and the pricing policy, right? So basically, boys and girls, what I want us to look at today. So yesterday we did look at uh, the, 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 the marketing and we discovered that basically with your marketing mix, you find these four po uh, policies. So we did the pricing policy last week. We did the product policy. Um, uh, okay, no, product policy, we're going to do it today. We did the distribution policy. Then uh, tomorrow, we're going to look at your communication policy. So for today, we are looking at your product policy. That's the policy we're looking at for today. However, these two, we have already dealt with them basically sometime last week. Your pricing and uh, distribution policy. So it is very important for you to to what you call to um, to understand all these policies, and we we use all of these policies for everything. Basically, does it make sense? Right. Before I can start with the product policy, I want to go to its learning outcomes. Basically, right. So basically, these are the learning outcomes that you need to know or that you need to have whenever you are dealing with your product policy. Remember your learning outcomes, those are the things that you need to know by the end of the lesson or things that you need to be comfortable with basically, right? So under your product policy, you need to outline or mention or explain, discuss the product policy with specific references to types of product, product development, trademarks and packaging, right? So you have to know all of these. Also, you need to outline, mention, discuss the categories of consumer goods or products. You need to explain or discuss the importance of product development. You need to outline, mention, discuss, explain the steps, stages of product design. Also, you need to mention or explain or discuss the purpose of packaging. Why do you package in a certain way and stuff like that? So here, basically, boys and girls, we're looking at the product on its own or, yeah. So we've got different of products. Uh, I'm still going to go deep when we start with our actual uh, uh, lesson, right? Uh, you also need to elaborate on the meaning of trademarks. Discuss or explain, describe the importance of trademarks to the business and consumers. Outline or mention, explain the requirements of a good trademark. Very important grade 11s. Now, before I can start anything, basically, what I need to do now is to start with our product policy. Now, I'm going to explain what a product policy is, right? So the product policy is the first component of the marketing function. So it is the first component of the marketing function, right? So that what we mean by your product policy. The product is the main component of the marketing mix, e.g. when there is no product, is no business, or if it makes sense. So your product policy or the product is the main, product is the main component of marketing mix, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't have a business if you don't have a product. You need products in order for you to run a business, basically, right? The policy explains how the business is going to develop a new product, design and package. So here, we need to look at how will the business uh, are going to develop a new product, design and package. The product policy deals with the features, appearance, and the benefits of the product itself, basically, right? So that's what we mean by your product policy. Now, let's look at product types. So we've got two types of products, right? We've got your industrial goods, and we also have your consumer goods. Now, let's look what are the uh, industrial goods. 
So your industrial goods are used in the manufacturing process to produce other goods, e.g. your spare parts, your equipment, your machinery, right? So are those goods that are in the manufacturing process to produce other goods, right? Like your cutter, uh, let's say uh, your machine, your conveyor belt, you know, in a factory, majority of the factories, they use conveyor belts to produce certain products. Uh, uh, all these big machines, your equipments. I mean, if you are in a bakery, you will need what? You will need your, your, what you call, your stove you know, in order to produce other products. A stove on its own is a product, but it will be classified as an industrial product, basically, right? So it won't be classified as a, a consumer product, right? So it's just uh, those things, basically, guys. So it is very important for you to do understand, to know on what is happening and stuff like that, right? So once you are done with this chapter, guys, you'll see or you'll know how uh, these businesses classify their products and stuff like that on, on how do they manufacture those products. So it is very important or it is very vital, boys and girls, to know what you're dealing with, how and when, right? Now, when we look at the consumer goods, these are the goods that satisfy the needs of the consumers now, right? These are the actual goods that they've been produced using your industrial goods, basically, right? Now, I want us to look at the categories of consumer goods or consumer products, basically, right? So now, these are the different categories when it comes to consumer goods or consumer products, right? We've got con convenience goods, shopping goods, specialist goods, specialty goods uh we've got uh importance of product development right sorry we've got services we've got unsought goods okay so we've got five different types of goods basically under consumer goods now let's start with the first one the convenience goods so these are low-priced goods purchased by consumers without much thought. So they are low-priced goods, right? Consumers are not willing to spend much effort on buying convenience goods because they differ very little in terms of price, right? So they differ very little in terms of price, quality, and satisfaction it provides to consumers. For example, of convenience goods, uh, your bread, milk, soft drinks. So those are your, will be classified as your uh, 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 convenience goods because, I mean, they are low-priced goods. Basically, you can sort of like get them at any time or you can afford them, you know, at least you can just afford these goods. So it is very important to know these types of goods, grade 11s. Now, Let's look at another category when it comes to consumer products or consumer goods. Now let's look at the shopping uh, goods, right? So these will be the goods that are more expensive than convenience, right? So they are more expensive than convenience goods, right? Consumers do not buy them very regularly. Um, they are prepared to spend a considerable amount of time and energy going to various shops until they uh, they are sure that they are getting the best value for their money. Examples of shopping goods, it's like your television, your motor vehicle, uh, your clothing, but your very expensive clothing, you know. We know other clothing basically can fall. It can be convenience, it can be shopping, but uh, some clothing, it's affordable, guys. But here we're talking about your expensive clothing, you know it will be seen as your shopping goods, basically. So I hope by now you know the examples for each and every category of these goods, grade 11. It is very vital or important for you to know these as it will help you for your assessments at the end of the year or the exam. Let's look at third component of our consumer goods, of each is a specialty goods, right? Now, what is a specialty good? A specialty good, these goods 
I usually have a specific brand name. So they have a specific brand name. So these ones are more specialty goods, right? Meaning now, if something has a brand name, meaning now you, you can only get in that brand only. You can't get it somewhere else, right? So consumers know exactly what they want and are willing to search until they find exactly what they are looking for, right? So it is very important. The examples of specialty goods, it's your jewelry, your branded clothing, uh, you know, it will fall under your specialized, your specialty goods, basically, right? So guys, please, 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 you see how my notes are, 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 are stated, guys. You must state everything in bullet form, uh, even in an exam. Remember business studies, guys, I'm still going to show you probably on Friday, I'm going to have an exam technique session where I'll show you one by one on how to, uh, on how to, 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 to answer in an exam scenario or in an assessment scenario, uh, the bullet form, the bullet point forms on what things the marker is looking for or the examiner is testing. So we're just going to be looking at our exam techniques. And I'll tell you more tomorrow because tomorrow I'm planning for us to mark our assessment. Um, I know we're supposed to mark it today because it was done on Friday, but by tomorrow, I want, I want us to mark the assessment that it was posted to you on Friday to complete it. I hope you did it and I hope you uh, sort of understand what's happening there, but tomorrow we're going to have a session on that uh, assessment so that I can take you step by step or show you on how we need to, uh, uh, um, to answer those in an exam situation scenario right let's carry on now uh okay someone is asking me what assessment so basically there's an informal assessment that the school is conducting and this applies to all the subjects other subjects are currently writing uh, uh the, the those assessments so basically you need to go to your uh the school's website to download that assessment basically right so it, all the assessments for all the subjects are being posted there so just go to the school uh, website and download those assessments i think it's africa .com. so just go on, on on google or website and do those all right thank you i hope i've answered your question all right Let's look at another type of good or another uh, category when it comes to uh, uh, consumer goods. Let's look at the services. So services are not tangible. We know that, right? Services are not tangible. They are intangible because uh, services are rendered by services provided to consumers. Example, your garden service, your hairdresser, um, what you call uh, uh your, 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 the public transport, they're rendering a service, going to a doctor, seeing a dentist, uh, um, consulting with a lawyer. That's all uh, seen as a service, basically. I'm sure by now, grade 11s, you know what services are, basically, right? And it is very important for you to understand all these terminologies because. You will be using them throughout this year and next year in grade 12. So services are rendered by the service providers to consumers. And these are the examples, right? So there is no goods here. It's just that uh, even the service, it's not tangible, meaning you can't touch, right? You can't touch the service, but you can sort of see the service basically, right? But you can't touch it. It's not tangible, right? Unsought goods now. Let's speak about, these are the goods that consumers do not know, okay, do not know, think of until they need such uh, products appear. So these goods basically, uh, majority of the, now, of the time, we don't know that we need them up until uh, the, those goods, we see them, uh, for example, right? So 
um, for example, okay, actually, I want you guys to give me an example of your unsought goods. You can type your answer in the chat box. Um, if you know anything or if you really want to try. Uh, so please just type you know, the answer of unsought goods in the, into the chat box. Uh, I'll be waiting or I'll just, um, yeah, I'll be waiting for you guys if you do have anything that you might think of, of your unsought products. What are those uh, basically? And your time starts now, just a minute. All right, I see a comment. Uh, someone seems like has the answer. Aha, very good. Uh, hoverboards, basically. Uh, someone just commented and say hoverboards. So yes, hoverboards will be seen as your unstored goods. Also, um, I do have an example, like for example, your, your fire extinguisher will be seen as a, a, a um, what you call it, as an unsought goods because now it's well you won't just go and buy it but when you see it uh you uh, i mean you would tell that you know what you need it does it make sense so yes very good thanks for your participation uh thank you so much uh let me just check uh fiesa thanks a lot thanks thank you so much right all right, let's carry on, boys and girls. At least now we know what unsought goods are or is. Now, let's look at the importance of product development, right? So let's look at the importance of your product development, right? So why is it important for us to develop a product, basically, right? The product design needs are, are to be designed to suit the needs of the customers, right? So that's why it is important for a product development. So if a product uh, design does not suit the market, the target market, there will be a very little demand for the product, right? The business needs to develop new products in order to replace all the products in stage four when the sale declines, right? Businesses are able to remain competitive because they are always on a lookout uh, for ways to improve their products, right? The products become different from those of the competitors, basically. Very, very, very important. It is very vital to understand all of these things and to know them better. Now, you need to look at the steps or stages of product design, right? So let's look at these steps or stages when it comes to a product design. What are the things that we need to follow or that we need to know when we design a product, basically? That what it, that's what it means, basically. Um, you, need an, uh, you need the idea generation or design and development of product ideas. Obviously, you need ideas, your product ideas, basically. Or in other words, how do you want your product to look like and stuff like that? You must selecting and shifting of a product ideas or idea screening, the concept of developing and testing, or design the testing of the product concept, which should happen before the product is being developed. Very important, the design and testing of a product concept, right? So sometimes guys, and this is practical, you can't just sell something to someone if you haven't tested that thing yet, basically, right? So you need to test that thing first, before you can sell it to someone, you need to see whether, how does it do to, 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 to others before you can sell it to the public, right? What does it do to them? Is it, treat them it, is it treating them so good? So you need to test it and see whether your product is working or not before you can put it in the market, 
So it is very vital or important because other sometimes you can be sued, people they can get sick and stuff like that. So it is very, 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 very important. And it is your own responsibility to understand all of those things, right? Now, let's look at your uh, uh, analysis of the profitability of the product concept or business analysis. So you must have the analysis of your product, your profitability. Your consumer response must be tested using a small sample of product, right? So how are you going to do your testing? with a small uh, uh, sample of product or market testing. So your technical implementation systems or processes are put in production, planning and control process. Also, you've got your commercialization. The product is launched and marketing advertising campaign implemented. New product pricing or product is priced and uh, focused worked out basically right so now you know the stages or steps of product design now let's look at your um the purpose of packaging uh why do you have to package differently for different products guys it is very important to know your packaging remember as people we're selling different products right the packaging is, is, is also important. Like the food packaging won't be the same as your uh, toiletry packaging. That's totally, those are totally different things. So it is very important for us to know what we are producing so that we can get a different packaging. Right, let's look at our bullet number one when it comes to uh, packaging, right? Packaging is needed to contain the item or product. So it's needed to contain, that's the first thing, right? okay? Because you can't sell the product uh, on its own, like loose, basically, if I can put it like that. We need, you need what? You need to cover it. So that's where your packaging comes in. So it protects the product from breakages, jams, moisturizer, or spoilage. So the packaging, it protects the product on itself or on its own for uh, jams and the breakages, moisturizer or spoilage, right? It promotes the products by indicating the brand and the trademark, very good. Indicating the brand name and the trademark of the company of the product. Like for example, if I have cold drink, uh, so now we know that we've got different types of cold drinks. We've got Coke, we've got Pepsi, um, we've got our, a refresher and stuff like that. So if I've got the packaging, I'll tell that, okay, this drink is from a refresher, this drink is from Pepsi, this drink is from Coca-Cola. I'll be able to tell with the packaging. Can you see now the importance of packaging, the brand and the trademark also. Also, it prevents the tempering of theft of the product. So also it prevents the tempering of theft also, it improves the convenience in use of sto storage of a product. So it also improves that inconvenience, basically, boys and girls. It contains information about the product, include, including users, any harmful warnings, or uh, all those things. Uh, sometimes it tells you how your product was made out of, like it tells you the ingredients. Uh, it also tells you the, 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 the mass on its own, whether is it five liter, is it, is it six liters, uh, is it 500 milliliters, or if it's in kgs, is it one kg, two kg, basically. So it indicates the masses only. That's another point you can add from your notes or whatever, right? So all these things, it, it tells you basically that, okay, this product incorporates this, this product incorporates that, right? So also make product easier to identify. As I said to you, it is easier to identify if you've got a proper packaging, but if you don't have a proper packaging, unfortunately, it's just gonna be difficult for you to uh, identify those, right? Also, it differentiates the product from other competing uh, products. As I was saying to you, this point I've already dealt with it. I made an example with different 
soft drinks or cold drinks, basically. I said, uh, you can have a, a cold drink from Coke, you can have a cold drink uh, from uh, Pepsi, you can have a cold drink from Refresher. So we've got different uh, um, uh, competing products. So if you've got a proper packaging, you can tell that, okay, this soft drink is from Coke or this soft drink is from Pepsi or this soft drink is from Refresher and stuff like that, right? Also, another purpose of packaging, it attracts attention to show value of the product as a marketing tool. So also it, it shows the value of a product as a marketing tool. Very, very important, boys and girls. It is very vital for you guys to know these things. It is very vital to know how, uh, um, how uh, packaging it is important to you, to our lives. Why do we need to package? Even if you want to start your own product later in life, you must know that, okay, I do the packaging because of one, two, three. This is why I need to do the packaging and how I need to do the packaging. I know majority of you in the next 10 years, in the next 15 years, some of you even in the next three years or next five years will be entrepreneurs. Some of you will be producing products. So you need these skills basically to know, or maybe some of your parents at home or your legal guardians they will be starting businesses and uh, you can have an input when they want to or do a certain product or to produce a certain product. You can always be there for them and tell them things that they need to look after, things that they need to do when producing a product so it is very important, boys and girls, to know all of these things because I'm telling you, these pointers will come in handy when you are, um, what you call, when you are starting your own uh, business in the next few years, basically, right? Also now, you need to look at uh, the last bullet points. So with your last bullet points, it links the product to the promotion strategy used to promote the product, right? Also, it reduces the storage costs by minimizing the breakage, basically, right? All right, boys and girls. Now, I want us to look at the types or kinds of packaging. Now, let's start with the packaging for immediate use or unit packaging, right? So. The immediate use basically is the packaging needs to, to be cheaper because once the product is consumed, the packaging is thrown away. Example, the packet chips, your chocolate bar, wrapper, and stuff like that, right? That is it's for immediate use. So you can't use an expensive packaging for something that you're going to use immediately or for something that you're going to use as a once-off product. Uh, remember when you speak about once-off product, I mean, a chocolate, a chocolate you can only eat it once, then that's it, you know, I mean, unless, um, even though you keep it in the fridge, but I mean, it, it's packaging, it, it's not supposed to be uh, something that is going to be expensive because chocolate, we know, it's one of your, your, your um, what's the kind of goods? It's one of your perishable items, basically, right? Um, we've got another packaging of which is packaging for double use. So basically this one, boys and girls, packaging for double use uh, is the packaging that can be reused for the purpose other than storing the original content. The consumers will thus be reminded of the particular brand after the original contents have been consumed. Um, the container can be used for something else uh, once the content is finished. Uh, we know this from home. Uh, uh, we know this ice cream uh, tap. Uh, you know, speaking of packaging for double use, there's this joke I've seen, I think, on one of the social media platforms. So basically, um, it's a tin of biscuits. So that tin of biscuits, uh, it says to you, um, you think it's there are biscuits inside up until you 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 find 
uh, your Toulouse or yeah, your Toulouse or Cutlery. That's why I'm laughing when I'm seeing the packaging for double use. So you see, sometimes at home during uh, Easter holidays or during Christmas, uh, at home maybe they buy a tin of biscuits. Uh, then after that container, that tin, it can be used for storing sugar at home or it can be used to store something else. Uh, you know, some they put uh, old tools, small tools to that tin basically. Then you think that it's for biscuits, so and it's not for biscuits. So that's a packaging. That's another example for packaging for double use, right? All right, great. Twelves tomorrow we'll finish from packaging for resale. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry, I kept on saying great twelves, great elevens, right? Um, it's just that I just had a great twelve class, so great twelve is still in my head basically. Uh, so grade 11s, I'll see you again tomorrow. Please feel free to ask any questions should you have any. Uh, tomorrow we'll be finishing this chapter because we only left with a few things that we need to cover. And also tomorrow we'll be marking our informal assessment. Just have a watch out tomorrow. We'll be looking at those things. From my side, I say thank you so much grade 11s for tuning in and have a lovely evening. Goodbye.